Mi'raj. Al-Isra means the night journey that the Prophet ﷺ undertook from Mecca to Jerusalem. Mi'raj actually means the, if you like, item or the mechanism of rising up high. But we refer to it as the actual... Hi, welcome. This is uh, Hyder Ali Sayyid from Asivagam, United under Tamil Shiva. Uh, the speaker says about Isra and Miraj. But the Quran only talks about Isra, that is the travel from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem. In chapter 17, verse 1. I recite from Quran. Purity is to him who took his bond man in a part of the night from the sacred mosque to this Aqsa mosque uh, around which we have placed blessing in order that we may show him a great sign. Indeed, he is the listener and beholder. Quran chapter 17 verse clearly says about Isra that is a travel from uh, Mecca to Aqsa and uh, the Aryan settlers and their Bukhari Hadith talks about Miraj which is not, never not mentioned in Quran anywhere. Ascension, not the apparatus but what the Prophet did and that is to rise up to the heavens and so Al-Isra from Mecca to Jerusalem, Al-Mi'raj from Jerusalem to the heavens. SubhanAllah, probably the strongest position around a year before the Hijrah. The second question, where did it happen from? The Prophet ﷺ said that when I was in the Hatim, lying down, Jibreel came to me. So this is the most authentic version. There is another version. It is the semi-circular region that is outside of the Kaaba. And uh, he says that in the Hatim, Jibreel opened up my chest and he brought a bowl made out of gold that was full of, in one version it says Zamzam, in another version it says full of Iman. And he took out my heart and washed it and put it back. Then Jibreel brought me a dab. Aryan Hadith, Bukhari Hadith, talks about uh, Jibreel cutting open Prophet uh, Muhammad's uh, chest and removing the heart and cleaning it with zamzam and putting in wisdom and belief. It sounds good, but actually it goes against Quran. And, and uh, is this the way Allah gives wisdom to pe people, especially to Prophet Muhammad? If you read Quran and Bible regarding uh, when Allah came down to meet Mo Moses, he told Moses to remove his sandal. You are standing in front of your Lord. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 5. In Acts 7 verse 33. In Quran, Quran chapter 20 verse 12 confirms Bible regarding the removal of sandal in the presence of the Lord. I read, Indeed, I am your Lord. So remove your sandal. Indeed, you are in the sacred valley of Tuwa. When Allah met Musa, Prophet Moses, he was just told to remove the sandal. And when, uh, as per the Bukhari Hadith of Aryan, Persian Aryan, they are making uh, fun of Prophet Muhammad. So they have created a story where Prophet Muhammad is suppo supposed to go to meet Allah. So his heart was cut and he was put in belief and wisdom. Dabba is a beast, it's an animal. It is smaller than a mule and larger than a donkey. Abiyal, pure white. And it was called Al Buraq. And Al Buraq, of course, comes from the root of lightning, right? So it's lightning speed. Lightning speed. And the Prophet explained that it puts its hoof, every hoof of this Buraq, it puts it as far as the eye can see. According to another report in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said it had a muzzle on it. You know what you put on the, the, the harness. It had a harness on it and it had a saddle. Jibreel was holding on to the harness and the Prophet ﷺ stepped onto Al-Buraq. He basically mounted Al-Buraq. What does an animal do that is mounted by a strange person? Jumps up, it neighs, right? So Buraq tried to do that and Jibreel basically smacked him. Jibreel yanked the harness and he said, Woe to you! Alam tastahi? Are you not ashamed? For wallahi, no one has ridden you more blessed in the eyes of Allah than your current rider. And the Prophet ﷺ said that I rode him and he took me. You all must be knowing the story of uh, Queen Sheba 
and the throne during uh, Solo King Solomon time. King Solomon said he wanted to bring uh, Queen Throne from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. And uh, in his court, the, the jinns, the demons, they, he said that I will, uh, before you sit down, I will bring that uh, throne in front of you. There was another man, ordinary man, a scientist maybe. Uh, he said before the gaze returns to you, he is going to bring that uh, throne back, uh, throne from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. And here, as per the Bukhari Aryan Hadith, a donkey is brought to, to take Prophet Muhammad to heaven. The gatekeeper behind the door asked, who is it? So Jibreel says, it is Jibreel. And the gatekeeper said, do you have anybody? And Jibreel said, yes, I have with me Muhammad Wasallam. The gatekeeper says, has he been sent for? Jibreel says, yes. So then the doors open up. So for every single one of the seven heavens, the same story happens. They get to the second heaven and it's closed. Jibreel asks permission. The gatekeeper says, who is there? Jibreel says, it's Jibreel. He says, is anybody with you? The same conversation. Every single one of the seven heavens. The Prophet ﷺ goes to the first door. The first door opens and there is a man standing. The Prophet ﷺ described him as being tall, huge. And Jibreel says, this is your father Adam. So say salam to him. So the Prophet ﷺ said salam and Adam responded and said, Marhaban bil ibn salih wa nabi salih Welcome, O noble son and O noble prophet. Well Persian Aryans, Bukhari Hadith continues that uh, Prophet Muhammad when he reached the first heaven he met uh, Adam al Islam then the second he met someone Th third he met someone fourth fifth sixth seventh here the question is when Quran chapter 23 verse 99 to 104 clearly says that all people who have died their soul is kept in ancestral plane that is called uh, alam -e barzak and all the soul right now are in alam -e barzak ancestral plane and till day of judgment they will be there so the question is how did uh, prophet muhammad met so many prophet in heaven first heaven second heaven third heaven fourth heaven fifth sixth seven so here again heedless people the aryan settlers children of cain they are making mockery of Prophet Muhammad, who is the messenger of Asivaga. To a level that no living creature has ever been to, as far as we know. But we don't have any details about what was said except for the 50 salawat. That Allah Azza wa Jal, Furidat Ali, the Prophet said, Furidat Ali, as salawatu, khamsina salatan kulla yawm. 50 salawat every single day. And he goes back down and he meets Musa. What did your Lord tell you for your ummah? So here the Prophet says that my Lord told me that I should tell my ummah to pray 50 times a day. Here Musa says, Go back to your Lord and tell him to lower this. Because I have more experience than you with the Bani Israel and your Ummah will not be able to do 50 times a day. The Prophet ﷺ looked at Jibreel wanting to get his opinion. The riwayah says, as if he's getting his opinion. And Jibreel nodded to him, yes, do that. So the Prophet ﷺ went back up. Now here is where the riwayah differ. Some of them say it went down 5, 5, 5. Others say it went down 10, 10, 10. But really the point is the same. And that is multiple times back and forth, back and forth, at least five times. And every time... Quran chapter 36, 1 to 11 clearly says that Prophet Muhammad never entertained Aryan settlers. Who, who whose forefathers had no honor. So here they are writing a hadith based on Borak hadith by Persian Aryan talking about uh, Miraj where Prophet Muhammad was cut open, he was uh, put on a donkey, then he traveled uh, to heaven, met all the Prophet and uh, ultimately met Allah and uh, got 50 rakat namaz and then he met uh, Musa salam, Prophet Moses and then uh, he reduced uh, request of Prophet Mo Moses. He went back to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, he went to uh, Allah and uh, returned back 
and ultimately the short namaz which the muslims are praying five times a day is based on this fake hadith so people going to mosque standing behind maulana and performing those short namaz based on burak hadith is nothing but making a mockery of prophet muhammad angel gibril and the religion of allah asiwagam 